Good morning, guys. This is UD from Unified Networking Lab. And in this video, very shortly, I will show you how to import and deploy the VMware machine. Yeah, it's in how to how to start actually the UNL. So what we need for that. So I open it uh, www.unitlab.com. Yeah, so I'm going to downloads and a little bit scroll down and you can see that uh, Google Drive mirror where you can download an original empty there is a I mentioned again yeah so there are no any images preloaded and it is original over image from unified networking club it's a just a just a click and download yeah it's a download to start download anyway yeah it's about I will not do this because I already downloaded well um, let me go back and let's start so I recommend to use in any case we tested a lot of virtualizations yes and I will I will say you that the VMware will be the best it can be the VMware workstation it can be VMware player as well I will show you for VMware workstation uh, the similar edit settings and, and uh, setup it is for a VMware player okay let's do it I'm using the VMware workstation pro which is version 12 I love it actually. It's it's very nice one. Yeah, it's uh, uh, how how nice can be <laughs> VMware products. Well, I have already downloaded the networking networking club original one image from our website, and let's start. So I'm going to uh, open open a virtual machine, right? I'm going to desktop and choosing the original one image. Okay, open. Uh, the name you can give any any what you wish. Yes, I'm saying it will be UNL test for me. Yeah, it's in your case it can be anything. You can leave original one as well as storage parts. Uh, if in the future you would like to expand the disk, yeah, it's uh, probably you need to choose another storage for a UNL a UNL machine. I'm saying import and let's accept and a lit little bit wait. Yeah. Until until UNL machine is clean, it's tiny, and then very quickly to importing. Yep. So we are done. Deploy is done. Let's grab my scratchings and check what I need to do. Tune before the first boot of Intel VT and other things. Okay. The first thing we have to go to edit virtual machine settings and give memory as much as you can because it's uh, mostly mostly laptop users has eight gigabytes and and uh, I recommend to use a six gigabytes for this machine. Even you are using the IOU. Yeah, it's uh, IOU images and lobbing for routing and switching. I recommend to choose a six gigabytes. Of course, it can run at four gigabits, uh, four gigabit RAM as well. Yeah, it's uh, like in a previous IOU web. Yeah, but I recommend to give it more. So in my case, it's um, a pretty good PC. It's i7 with a 32 gigs on on board. That therefore I'm giving to eight gigs. Yeah, but if you cannot give eight, it's yes, no worries. Just to give how much you can as much you can the processors as well in my case my computer has eight uh, cores but uh, usually laptops are about four cores yeah even less yes and therefore therefore you can choose four and that's in my case I'm choosing the four and two in a laptop users could be it's uh, four processors and the one core yeah it's or, or for example it can be two and one yeah it's 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 some weak laptops yeah it's or laptops would be it's a four and one no, such way so I'm leaving for, for, for four and two and a very important point is a look at this option virt virtualize Intel VT dash X EPT enhanced packets packet packet technology it is mandatory thing guys if you will not check this on your UNL simply will not run Kimu virtualized devices inside therefore remember this virtualize Intel's Intel VT slash EPT enhanced packet technology is a must just a must next step I'm going to network adapters I I hope that in in, in um, 
in your UNL, so yeah, it's maybe in this UNL later, I will need to connect some extra VMware machines. It could be ACS or ICE or whatever, some, some any host mids, maybe some Linux server you would like to connect in the future. Therefore, I'm saying to add more network adapters. I'm saying to add network adapter. Okay, that's I'm using the, not in this case. Okay, that's, that's fine. Uh, I'm choosing again. Yeah. And let's say one more network adapter. It, it will be quite enough for me in the future. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, just remember that adapters are supported by 10, starting from first to, to last is a 10. Adapters supported for any VMware machine. Therefore, you can add up to 10 external network clouds. In an ESXi video, I will show you... Uh, it's the next video I will show you how to deploy uh, UNL machine into ESXi and uh, will show as well how to tune these options and uh, therefore actually these uh, these adapters will be used here to connect some external machines for example in my case if you can see here the Windows 7 something or Windows 10 host it can be connected in any of these adapters so the first option and now look at the first adapter first adapter is very important into UNL um, because it is our management IP address where we which we will use to get access through the web to the UNL in this case I recommend for laptop users because uh, I recommend for laptop users use not it is because you are with laptops you can change your wireless networks and therefore your external LAN actually your Ethernet or, or Wi-Fi adapter can get some uh, in each time can get other other IP address from different subnets and which is not good for you now and therefore I recommend to use an out adapter it can be used on this machine as well yeah it's a, but if you have a desktop standalone PCs in this case I can bind it with my real real network which is VMnet zero I'm going to show you how to use it for not yet it's because most popular and it will work like like my Bridget network which is VMnet zero it's bridged to my real LAN yeah but I'm going to show you just the not okay good so it's done so options I mark it here yeah it's uh, the very important option is about processor processor and virtualized Intel VT uh, VTX and enhanced pack technology it is absolutely mandatory and, and must be on okay I'm saying okay and now we are ready for first boot right first boot good let's do so remind me later yes i'm not going to install any tools of vmware it can it can rewrite some packages inside of unl therefore i'm saying remind me later let's wait now it's a boot start So here we are. Look at this. You can see that network, uh, the first interface, which is not adapter, got IP address from my, let me show you, if I'm going to virtualize network editor here, and you can see that my NOT adapter is assigned to the subnet 192.168.255.0. And the DHCP option is on here. Look at this. Yeah. DHCP settings, this one is on. Yeah, so you can change the settings if you wish, yes, but don't touch if you don't know how to use this. So, and as you see, my NAT adapter is connected and the DHCP option, that's mean, and that's why my virtual machine got this IP. But, <clears throat> no rush, this is just a, just a visual one thing. The first step, what you have to do, after the first boot, let me show my, my scratchings, the setup static IP. Why static IP? I recommend to use the static IP because you will know every every time that the single IP address is given for this UNL machine. Usually DHCP as well is giving the same IP address, but I recommend to use a static in any case to use a UNL machine to use, try try and my recommendation is set up a static IP so it looks like he got IP address from DHCP and the next step will be to set up IP address as the permanent and the static the first login it is root and the default password uh, so it is a root and default password is UNL the small caps UNL 
UNL. And you can see out of the enter, it's jumped to the IP addressing wizard. Yeah, it's actually it's set up wizard for UNL machine. So I recommend to leave the root password as it is with the UNL because in the later videos, when you will need to run a Warshaw capture, uh, captures, live capture, it, this password will be sensitive there in some wrappers. Therefore, I'm using just simple UNL. The same password which, which is shown here, yeah, so let me just, just to see for you. UNL, I use it here, I'm hitting enter. UNL, small caps again. No changes of host name or, or DNS. You can do this if you are sure that you, you, you have a license, which is binded uh, license, uh, which will be necessary for IOU, and it is exactly binded with your domain name and the host name. Okay, I'm saying, okay, I'm do not change anything here, just to follow me. Yeah, so if you wish to set up it so quick, quickly and with no problems, just enter here. And now you can see that they use DHCP or static IP. I'm using the arrows going down and the space, the marking static. Cool. Setting it. Now it's waiting to give an IP address. If I'm going here in the a couple of steps ago, I shown you that my NAT adapter is assigned in a subnet. It's a 192.168.255.0. So I have to choose one IP address from this range. Okay. And I'm choosing 192.168.255 and let's do, okay, let's do 50. Okay, good. Enter. Mask is 24. Yeah, it's, uh, you can you can you can check the mask is uh, which mask is assigned here. Yeah, it's, you can see it. Look here, it's a subnet is two five five and a subnet is twenty four. Okay, I'm doing the mask two five five two five five two five five zero. Okay, enter and now it's waiting for gateway. Now, it's a little bit strange. Yeah, it's but guys are trying to use the dot one. Actually, dot one is your host machine, but not a NAT adapter. The NAT adapter is inside of virtual machine, and if we are going in inside, let let me show you. Oh, no, that was not there. Uh, not look at this NAT adapter and the NAT settings here. I'm just showing. I will not change anything, but I'm showing which is correct gateway. And look at the gateway. The gateway is two, and the same IP address is used for DNS IP as well. So therefore, my gateway is two. And usually, if you if you are using the default installations of VMware machines, the NAT adapter and which act as a gateway for your UNL machine always is two. So therefore, 192.168.255.2. Okay, good. Enter 192.168.255.2. This is a first DNS primary server, and there's some standard one which is Google and a four eight. Uh, you can use, of course, the, some IP address for NTP server, but you can leave it as empty. Empty means that it automatically will update the time from VMware and will use no one IP address but inside of VMware, and it, it, which is correct actually, and no problems at all here. And it is a direct connection for me, yes, because I don't use any proxies, but if some guy is using a proxies, you can configure your proxy yes, to get internet, because in the future, it is, it is a must to be UNL machine connected to the internet if you wish to get updates, because updates will, will come, will come directly from the internet to your UNL machine. No worries, we are not binding any information to no one. Yeah, it's a no one, no one can touch your UNL machine. It is because the first thing it's behind the nut. This is the first point. And therefore, no worries, but UNL machine should be in internet if you wish to get updates. So that's it. Static IP address is set up and I'm saying OK. And a machine is going automatically to boot. I'm going to pause until it's boot. So, 
here we are and look at this the IP address which we set up is 192.168.255.50 so how to verify if we got internet access and internet access you have to got over the DNS that's mean how to verify I will show you root and password was UNL small caps okay good I, we are in and I'm saying to ping three double three W's and let's say Google dot com success you can see that's mean this means that IP address DNS IP address works correctly and we can start the update process to the newest version the first thing how to check which version are you running now yeah and uh, for more convenient use UNL I recommend to now because you know your IP address here I recommend to use some putty or secure CRT because we can copy in this screen so I'm opening secure CRT and choosing SSH version 2 and the IP and I'm putting IP address of my UNL 192.168.255.50 right and the username is root Oops. <clears throat> root and I'm saying connect accept and save and the password is UNL small caps okay save password so we are in look at this we are in so the same machine we just installed and the steps how to update and how to verify first verify which version are you running okay df dash uh, oh no uh, dpkg dpkg minus l and unit lab and you can see that uh, this version is 54 the clean oh clean UNL machine from our website so we are going to update the process the first command which I will give here from console but be sure that you can ping Google Google com yeah it's if it respond you are ready to start updates I am doing apt get update okay it's automatically starting to download packs from repository and updating your UNL machine I'm going to pause because this process a little bit takes time. So the first first command done. Yeah, it's if you scroll scroll up. Yeah, it's everything is fine. He downloaded uh, packages. Yeah, it installed on UNL. The second command which I'm giving, follow me. apt get install unit lab. Okay, apt get install unit lab. I'm hitting enter. And he's asking yes or no. I'm saying yes. Let's do. Going to pause. So the update is finished. You can see that everything is fine. <clears throat> and we can check now which version I'm running. Uh, DPKG minus L unit lab. Okay. Check. And you can see the version is 1 two zeros dash one and fact actually your UNL is ready for use and management IP addresses is set up and let me try to get in 192.168.255.50 the first time is asking the private policy okay accept and the uh, username for web access is admin by default and the password is small caps UNL enter and we are in you can see that I am in it's absolutely empty a nice UNL machine it's ready to start to load up with images labs and whatever you need I hope it was informative for you and thank you for viewing